Hey guys, welcome back to Range of Survival and Fieldcraft. I'm Andrew. Now what I have for you today is a look inside my Get Home Survival Bag. Stand by. Now before we get started, let's take a look at the weight of our Get Home Bag. We want something light, mobile, easy to transport, and go with us everywhere. Our kit comes in at just around 15 pounds. Now when we select a get home bag, we want a bag that is going to blend into the environment that we find ourselves. We want a bag with muted colors like the silver, gray, or black bag that we have before us. And we want one average size that people tend to carry in the area. So what this means is that we have to do our planning beforehand, understand the environment, the people in the environment, whether they are day laborers, law enforcement, military personnel. We want to understand the environment and blend in as best as possible. An average size backpack with muted colors will blend in just about anywhere. The average person looking at this backpack wouldn't think that it actually has tactical capabilities to be used in a gunfight or for medical purposes or for simply just escaping, evading, and surviving in the wilderness. But we want a bag that has several pouches where we can compartmentalize our kit and then be able to find the items we're looking for very easily by reaching into the pouch where we store those items. Things like land navigation items, medical aid items, different utility items. We want a backpack that will serve and carry all of our equipment, but we want a backpack that is average size yet again that will fit our entire kit that we need for a get home bag. When we look at a get home bag, it is for 24 hours, maybe a little bit longer, and this bag can take us from an urban environment to a wilderness environment, help us survive and make our way to safety back home to refit, reorganize, fight off another threat or make decisions about bugging out and getting out of town or bugging in and staying put. This is a 511 covert backpack, but we can use this method or apply this method to other backpacks that have that open section at the front of the backpack as you wear it closest to your back. We simply open that compartment up, slide in our bulletproof plate or the sappy plate, close it, and then we can wear this backpack on our front, similar to a plate carrier, having bulletproof protection to our front in the event of a shooter. Always pack the things you're going to need or routinely use every time with this backpack in the parts of the backpack that you can get to easily on the outside of the backpack and not in the center or large compartment of the backpack. Things like land navigation items, flashlights to see in the dark or during hours of limited visibility, as well as water treatment tools like this water filter pack in the top exterior pouch of the backpack to get at easily and use. Smaller compartments make great space for those utility items that we use every day for any purpose. One of the utility items that I like to pack and recommend to you guys is just a keychain that has some survival tools on it. A keychain with a simple chem light to see in the dark or crack for an emergency, a rescue me tool to escape and extract yourself from a vehicle or somebody who may be injured in a vehicle, as well as a CPR face mask, a whistle for emergency signaling, a handcuff key to escape handcuffs, or we can hide that on our person, and then a small flashlight to be able to use in an emergency medical situation or during hours of limited visibility. And then we can pack other things in small pouches, such as a hank of 550 cord. This is approximately 10 feet. We have an extra large bandana. Any piece of cloth would be great, but extra large bandanas. We can obviously wear this, but then use it as a filter or a strainer. We can use it as a makeshift tourniquet or bandage. And then we have a zebra pen, not only to write with, but the zebra pen is stainless steel, 100% that we can use as an improvised weapon. And then on the exterior pouches, the smaller pouches, and the exterior of the backpack, we have an extra magazine for ammo for a pistol. We have a silk cock key that we can use. Exterior of buildings, especially older buildings, we can use that key to actually turn on a faucet, fill our water bottle. And then we have our water bottle, stainless steel, that we can put over a fire and transport and is unsuspecting to the average viewer. 
And then as we open up the main compartment, we have our larger items that can fit inside. Some of the first utility items that we have are spare batteries for our headlamp, for our GPS, as well as a solar charger fully charged with a charging cord for our phone so we can keep lines of communication open in an emergency. Next, we have just a small roll of Gorilla Tape. We then have a small tin opened up. It's just a makeshift mini medical kit. We have aspirin, we have a razor, a spare lighter, super glue, another hank of 550 cord, and then assorted bandages that we can use for just routine injuries, especially running through the wilderness. We're going to get scrapes and cuts so we can use that to treat ourselves in the field. And then a small survival tin with wilderness survival items inside. If we find ourselves out in the wilderness and have to survive, this will give us an extra edge. And then we have some clothes. We want at least a coat, a hat, some gloves, and maybe some extra sunglasses. We want this not only to stay warm if we're escaping, innovating, and moving through the wilderness, but we want clothes that are different from what we have on. That way we can disguise ourselves, change our shape, change the clothes we're wearing, and appear different to the average viewer and continue to evade. And then we pack some food, an MRE, Old Faithful, that we can take with us into the field, eat it, and we have at least a day's worth of food. And then we probably want to have a little bit of cordage with us, a larger type like this one inch tubular nylon that we can use with a carabiner. It has many uses, create a ladder out of it, create a rappel line for it, Swiss seat, and then we can use it to create a drag rope to drag our bag behind us for crawling through a covert. But some cordage with a carabiner goes a long way. Next, besides having a GPS or our phone with us, we want to carry an actual map and compass of the area. We don't want to leave home without a map, knowing the routes or being able to land navigate with just a simple map, as well as a compass that has several features on it so we can use a variety of maps if we find them. But having a map and a compass is the most basic way to land navigate, especially if that Chinese spy balloon detonates an EMP in the atmosphere and all the electronics shut off and we're back to terrain association with a north seeking arrow and a map. As another land navigation device, a GPS with coordinates either pre-planned or not planned. So if somebody finds us, they won't find our height site, but a GPS to help us land navigate over terrain, especially in an unknown or unfamiliar area. Next, we should have a filter, some sort of filter to go with us to treat water immediately as we find that filter. I prefer this mini Sawyer because we can use it as a straw to drink straight from the water source or we can use it to filter water through into a canteen or container. But we can also take this filter and it will screw on to a pop bottle. There's so much trash out there that we can find a plastic bottle that is still salvageable, attach the filter after filling the bottle with water, and simply drink the water right away. Now we have that flashlight on our keychain for emergency purposes. Easy to grab, but we want a larger flashlight that we can wear on our head, freeing up both of our hands, giving us the ability to perform tasks in the dark. So we have a headlamp, a large white beam with different power settings, as well as a red lens for nighttime use. And then we want that strobe setting so we have an emergency passive signal for search and rescue or friendly forces. To the average viewer, this doesn't have any tactical aspect to it, but we're going to take a look at the front of our backpack where we have our tactical setup for items such as medical aid and everyday utility as well as EPW. That first item for utility is just a simple multi-tool. This is a Super Tool 300. It has everything we need on it for urban and rural survival. A knife, pliers, saw, reamer. It's a good tool. Next, we have combat shears or penny cutters. We take these and we can strip off clothing or cut away clothing to expose a wound and treat that wound as part of medical aid. Also on the front in this first pouch is going to be our medical aid items. We have a tourniquet. We also have an Israeli bandage and some gauze. This is what we call just a simple blowout kit or a trauma kit to treat massive hemorrhaging and stop bleeding right away. So we have that tourniquet secured in place by two rubber bands. We can simply pull the tourniquet away and those rubber bands will break and we apply the tourniquet to the injury. We also have the gauze and the Israeli bandage held in place by a safety pin through the outside of the packaging, not the clean stuff, but we can just rip that package away, open it up and start treating wounds very easily with the safety pin method. And then behind our medical kit, we just have a couple of zip ties to use as improvised handcuffs or detainee kits for EPWs, enemy prisoners of war or non-friendlies in the area if needed so we can actually subdue them and defeat the threat. 
As part of this backpack, there is a concealed pouch or compartment that we can access from either side where we're going to store our most important survival or get home bag items. And those are going to be defense tools. Defense is one of the first priorities in a get home bag, especially operating in an urban environment. We need to defend ourselves and maintain safety. One of the things we can do is place our firearm and a fixed blade knife in this pouch. We take that firearm the holster and the knife in the sheath and we apply hook pile tape or velcro tape to the sheath and to the holster that way we can make it stick inside the pouch because there's opposite velcro inside that way it stays there we can access it easily especially if we're wearing this on our front with that sappy plate and back like a plate carrier to access that firearm but we have that safety and defense tool right there for easy access all right, guys, that does it for this video. A very dirty and very down video today on a get home bag in my setup. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, leave me a comment in the comment section. I always appreciate your feedback. I want to thank you guys for everything you do for me, for this channel, for your likes, your views, your subscriptions, your comments, your feedback, and your shares. And I'll be back with another video as soon as I can, guys. Thanks.